Hello, I'm Jane Holdsworth. I direct the Molecular Oncology Pathology Laboratory at the Icahn School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. I'd like to share with you today our experiences in the clinical laboratory validation of TCR-seq for the detection of clonality. I have no conflicts of interest to disclose. So the detection of clonal rearrangements of the TCR genes, in particular TRG and TRB, has been used to assist in the diagnosis of T-cell large granular leukemia, T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia, peripheral T-cell lymphoma, and mycosis fungoides. These methods of detection of these rearrangements that occur during the normal ontogeny of T cells are basically relying on PCR amplification across the VJ or VDJ segments by PCR, but followed by various methods of detection. These methods of detection have evolved over the years from gel-based electrophoresis, such as shown on the left, to capillary electrophoresis, which afforded a greater resolution in terms of the size of the fragments and also allowed for quantitation of the, of the fragments, to more recently detection of those rearrangements by NGS. The NGS now allows for identification not only of the families that are involved in the, in the rearrangements, but it also allows and identifies the sequence of the rearrangements so that over time, if, if tracking is required, it can be performed looking for these specific sequences. What I'd like to share with you today now is our experience in validating from gel-based detection of clonal TRG and TRB rearrangements over to NGS-based methods. The assay workflow has a number of steps, starting with DNA extraction from the respective specimen type that we would be analyzing. We undergo two different steps of assessment of the DNA, quantity by qubit and quality by PCR of different fragment sizes up to 600 base pairs. The PCR is, products are then analyzed by capillary electrophoresis where the acceptable size for DNA to move forward for analysis has to be a minimum of 300 base pairs. Our acceptable input DNA is preferred to be 100 nanograms, but it can go down to 25 nanograms. The first step then in the library is the library preparation, where there is a single master mix for TRG and another for TRB where the primers are designed with Illumin adapters up to 24 indices based on a kit manufactured by InVivoScribe. Next, we have Amplicon purification followed by quantitation and pooling. The quantitation is performed by quantitative PCR with pooling of two, for 2 to 4 nanomolar. The sequencing in our situation is performed on an Illumina platform, a MySeq, where we determine the acceptable minimum number of reads to be at least 50,000. The analysis of, of the data are done performing using uh, software available through InVivoScribe, where it merges reads that differ by less than two nucleotides and then expressed as a percentage of the total number of reads that were obtained. The primers that are used are shown here on the, in the next slide as provided in images provided by InVivoScribe showing the primers used for the VJ in terms of TRG on the left and the, the V to J primers or the DB to J primers for TRB. We proceeded with two steps. The first was an optimization. The second was the validation. The optimization, we used some available, commercially available and internal cell line DNAs diluted in polyclonal tonsil DNA. We also used leftover DNAs from our gel-based clonality assays 
using DNA extracted from a variety of different types as of specimen as shown here and with varying results either positive, negative or indeterminate for TRG and similarly for TRB. We made a decision in every run to include a negative control which was polyclonal tonsil DNA and a positive control per run was 5% jerkat DNA diluted in polyclonal tonsil DNA. No template control needs to be run every six months which should have less than 10,000 reads. One of the trickiest part and most challenging was that of setting the calling criteria based on those percentages of merged reads. The first step we decided was for each of the genes we set a value for above the clone for in order to consider whether or not clonality exists for TRG the highest merge read had to be greater than 2.7 percent and for TRB greater than 3.5 percent otherwise the sample was called polyclonal. This was based on independent running of polyclonal tonsil DNA and at least 26 samples that were paired TRG TRB negative. Next step was to establish the polyclonal background where required merge reads to be at least 1.5x higher than the next most frequent that were above 2%. If that no merge read ratio was greater than 1.5% the sample was called polyclonal. The next was to detect clonal rearrangements and in this case we said if reads were if merge reads were greater than 2x times the polyclonal background they moved down to step 4 however if we could not then find any reads that were 2x higher than the polyclonal background then the sample was called polyclonal finally depending on if the merge reads were three times the polyclonal background and we found one or two of these clonal rearrangements the sample was called monoclonal three to five was oligoclonal whereas if it was the merge reads were only two times the polyclonal background then we coined another terminology of small clones of uncertain significance or SCUS. On the next slide I'm giving you some examples of those for example M23 these were the top 10 merged reads in this particular case it was one point we are below here the difference was 2.7 X above 2 percent and therefore three times the polyclonal background which was 1.64 percent is 4.9 so this particular sample showed one clonal rearrangement that was three times more than three times higher the polyclonal background so it was termed monoclonal this sample you can see here this was a, the 0 0.63 was the established polyclonal background we have at least two clones now that are more than 3x the polyclonal background it's also called monoclonal for this particular sample M77 now there was no clones that showed at least a 1.5 fold difference between their merged reads therefore this sample is considered polyclonal the next sample is an example of a, an SCUS where in this particular case the polyclonal background was found to be 4.34% merged read. We had one clone that was more than 2x the polyclonal background therefore this sample was called SCUS and in the last example M8 we have where the clone was not we could only we could not find a clone that was more than 2x so again the sample was downgraded to polyclonal. What we found was that we ended up having to we ended up in our final uh, validation set to run samples in duplicate so that we could merge the the results and findings so that the lowest call was the sample was the result provided. In the validation we used 53 leftover DNAs for, from the gel-based clonality assay for accuracy as shown in this slide here. The concordance with our findings was 84% for DRG and 88% for TRB. 
with potential causes for discordance mostly comprising ones that had been called positive were downgraded to polyclonal possibly due to the low resolution of the gel-based methodology and different primer sets. We then assessed precision, reproducibility was very high for both TRG and TRB with the biggest issue arising due to the, the clones that were small clones of uncertain significance which should be interpreted with caution. Analytical sensitivity was, was assessed in independent cell lines with independent dilutions and we can confirm the 5% low limit of detection. Analytical specificity was addressed by looking at peripheral blood samples from apparently healthy donors, all of which were found to be polyclonal. In summary then, we went, underwent optimization and validation for TRG and TRB by NGS to replace our gel-based method. It was validated with the limit of detection of 5% and in fact it required a large number of specimens. It turned out to be more than 150 leftover specimens in order to, div to perform both steps. We established the calling criteria, which was the most challenging, and we felt most discordance arose due to validation of calls from positive to polyclonal. We're going to expand our studies now to allow for tracking. We'd like to develop a TCR index or sh based on a Shannon index determination for non-T-cell diseases. And we'd also like to expand our validations then for IgKappa and IgH clonality assessments. With that, I thank you for your attention and I'd like to thank our team and our chairman for their continued support. Thank you very much.